Hi everyone, this is Paul Girard. I'm founder and president of PG Presents, an independent student loan consulting company. We've put together a series of repayment modules that are designed to help you guys do a better job of managing your student loans. Module number five is on married borrowers and repayment. Now in this module, we're going to look at the impact of marital and tax filing status on the calculation of payments under the income driven repayment plans, plans like pay as you earn known as pay and revised pay as you earn known as repay. We'll take a look at what are called community property states. We'll also take a look at married borrowers and what happens if their spouse has student loans and refinances with a private lender. Very important information there. And finally, we'll show you how to estimate payments for married borrowers under scenarios of married filing jointly and married filing separately. Now, a reminder as we go through this, there are two categories of repayment plans on federal loans, time-driven repayment plans and income-driven repayment plans. One of the advantages to the time-driven repayment plans is that marital and tax filing status have absolutely nothing to do with the calculation of monthly payments. So if you can afford a standard 10-year plan or perhaps even an extended 25-year plan, your monthly payments are not going to change. They have nothing to do with marital and tax filing status. However, the income-driven repayment plans, once again, like pay and repay, marital and tax filing status may impact the calculation of the payments depending on which plan you choose. Now, this is a comparison chart of the income-driven repayment plans known as IBR. Notice that's an older plan, as you know from the previous module on income-driven repayment plans. There are very few borrowers who are graduating these days using income-based repayment, a much older plan. But it also compares pays you earn that came out in 2012 and revised pays you earn known as repay that came out in 2015. This chart is on our website, pgpresents.com, and once again, it was referenced in an earlier module. We've highlighted for you on this chart spousal income because we want to be absolutely sure you understand how spousal income comes into play under these plans. Notice that with IBR pay and repay, all three of these plans, if you are married filing a joint tax return, spousal income will be counted in the calculation of your monthly payment, once again, under all three plans. However, please remember that if your spouse has federal student loan debt and you're filing a joint tax return, not only will their income be counted, but their federal debt will be factored into the payment calculation as well. So once again, with IBR pay and repay, if you are married filing a joint return, spousal income will be counted. However, if you need to exclude spousal income from the calculation of your monthly payment, the only way to do that is with pays you earn or with the older income-based repayment plan known as IBR, but you will have to file a separate tax return because notice with repay, with repay, spousal income is always counted regardless of tax filing status. We want to briefly mention what are called community property states. Now, there's a caveat here that we are not tax advisors, but we understand that a community property state is one in which the money earned by either spouse while you're married and all the property that might be bought with those earnings is considered equally owned by each spouse. And the community property states are listed there, Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Washington, and Wisconsin. Why are we mentioning community property states? If you are filing a separate return under either IBR or pay, in other words, if you need to exclude spousal income from the calculation of your monthly payment and you're using IBR or pay to do that, because remember, those are the only two repayment plans where you can file a separate return and exclude your spouse. If you are in a community property state, it's our understanding that half of or at least half of your spouse's income will still show on your tax return, even though you are filing separately. This is why if you are filing separately and using IBR or pay, 
it's important to send in something called alternative documentation or sometimes we call it a self-certification letter that tells the loan servicer, look, I'm filing separately, but I live in a community property state and half of the income you see on this tax return is not mine. Please exclude it from the calculation of my monthly payment. And by the way, the U.S. Department of Education has notified the loan servicers that they have the flexibility to do that. So once again, very important if you are trying to exclude spousal income from the calculation of your monthly payment under IBR or pay, if you live in a community property state, you'll need to notify your loan servicer to exclude your spouse's income that shows up on your tax return. Now let's take a look at married borrowers and refinancing. We mentioned on an earlier slide that at any time you're married using an income-driven repayment plan that counts spousal income, if your spouse has federal student loan debt, their federal student loan debt will be factored into the monthly payment calculation under your income plan. Fair is fair. If their income is being counted, their federal debt will be factored in as well. But look carefully at that second bullet. If you're married and using an income-driven repayment plan where spousal income is counted and your spouse has federal student loan debt and they refinance their debt with a private lender, their debt can no longer be factored into your monthly payment calculation and in all likelihood your monthly payment would go up in some cases significantly depending on how much debt they have refinanced. So very important if you're married and your spouse has federal student loans, there can be an impact on your monthly payment calculation if they refinance their debt with a private lender. One of the questions we get asked a lot from married borrowers or folks who are thinking about getting married is what kind of impact is that going to have on their monthly payments? A reminder, it doesn't have anything to do with the monthly payment amounts under the time-driven repayment plans, but it can impact the monthly payment amount with the income-driven repayment plans such as pay and repay. You should know that already from the previous modules. It's very easy to figure this out. Just go to the repayment estimator at studentaid.gov and in the drop-down box under the tax filing status, the first time run it perhaps as married filing jointly and impact your spouse's or future spouse's income and any kind of federal student loans they have, and then compare the payment amount under that scenario with doing the exact same thing, but in the drop-down box, this time choose married filing separately, and you'll see the impact of filing jointly versus separately on the income plans. The AAMC Midloans Organizer and Calculator at aamc.org slash MLOC will let you do the same thing in terms of actually running out the total repayment amounts and total projected forgiveness amounts under those two different scenarios. This is the end of module number five.